men gonna give it to you. Now let me stop here for a moment, cause I don't. I, see, they can God work this out for me to talk about this for a moment. How many of us have played Monopoly ever? They got this new thing now in a Monopoly where you get community chess, and it's a card that me and my son love, waiting for somebody to pick out. It's where they say you take all the hundred dollar bills you got in the bank, and you make it rain. You take all of them, you toss them up in the air, and as many as you can catch, they yours for you to keep playing the game. Can I tell you all this? God gives you or not a greater promise than waiting on something to fall out the sky. He says, and men, people going to come and put it back in your hand. There's no greater promise for you and I to rely on. I see our uh, media room is ready. Let's go ahead and pay attention to our screens for our morning announcements. Good morning, Ephesians. These are your monthly announcements. Please join us every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. for our Sunday school hour. Our classes begin at ages 3 and up. Please join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Bible study. Bible study is held in this building. The months of July and August, the church will be witnessing right after service in the 53212 area. Details for specific areas will be available in the lobby. July 21st at 3 p.m., Lady C will be preaching at Mercy Memorial Baptist Church. The address is 2474 North 37th Street. July 28th at 11 a.m., join us for our Rodney Coke Scholarship Service. Please remember to invite someone and pray for all services. Hey Amen. I want to ask if you would to govern your lives accordingly. Listen, this evening at 3 p.m., uh, my wife, the most beautiful Holy Ghost filled woman on the planet. Amen. Listen, I, I wake up with a smile on my face when I roll over and look at her. And she's still sleeping. Her breath smells so good in the morning, I just say, give me more, give me more, give me more. Amen. <laughs> Listen, we're going to move on. Uh, we want to ask if you need an offering envelope in which to give your very best offering to the Lord. We're going to actually hold your hand high, and our ushers will bring to you an offering envelope uh, while I'm talking. And then uh, if you happen not to have cash or check and you wish to give and be a blessing to this church and to give to the Lord, to sow into his ministry. You can also give via the Giveify app. You'll find it in your app store. A uh, couple of really quick announcements. Listen, God keeps blessing us as a church that he keeps adding to what we need as a church to keep doing his work. Amen? And so God has blessed us that he's called another one to the office of being able to, pro to proclaim God's word. And we're so grateful that God has blessed us as he's called Sister Susie Travis to, to preach God's word. Amen? Can we give God some, some praise? Amen. Amen. And so we'll we'll be uh, working with her and, and preparing for that, uh, that it is a joy and a burden. So I want to ask you all to please be praying for her uh, as she takes this step of, uh, of preaching and proclaiming God's word. Uh, other two quick, quick things. I want to ask you all to please be praying for Pastor Todd, uh, along with his wife and his family, along with Sister Alberta Barnes. And then I want to talk about Pastor Todd here for a moment. Listen, uh, uh, Pastor Todd is just like you and I getting older each and every day. And what I'm going to ask you all to do is some of us may know where the hospital is in. I'm not going to say where it's at because we're streaming service. But I'm going to ask you all to do this. Would you respect Mrs. Todd and their daughters and their son, Kenny, by looking at him as if that was your parent that was sitting there right now going through this difficult time of of aging going day by day. Uh, and some of you all may be saying, well, why the pastor ain't say nothing about that sooner? Because, you know, the, the reality is there's some of us who have zero tact when it comes to dealing with people when, when they're going through a, a, a time of aging and getting older in life. And so I'm going to ask you all to please, sir and ma'am, do this for us. He's prayed for you many a day. You and I owe him to pray for him and his family. Amen. Would you do that for us? Amen. We, uh, two other really quick things. We have a flyer that's on the Welcome Center for uh, back-to-school health fairs. Listen, if you're concerned about health insurance, getting supplies for your kids for school, 
um, there are a bunch of health fairs and school research, school resource fairs that are coming up. So I want to invite you to visit the uh, Welcome Center. Uh, as we're preparing to give, I uh, want to mention to those of you that are on vacation, and you may be concerned about giving to the Lord first, and that may be a challenge for you, that in the Givelify app, you can actually choose to give to the church on a reoccurring basis where you don't even have to mess with it. It'll happen every two weeks or every week or once a month, whatever works best for you to be able to give to the Lord. And as we give to the Lord this morning, I want to remind you, Jesus says to you and I, if you get to the temple and then remember that you got a problem with your brother or sister, leave your offering there. Go back and get it straight with the person. Because God's more concerned about you and people than he is about your dollars. Then secondly, you and I ought to give to the Lord the tithe and offering. Can everybody say that with me? Tithe and offering. That means and is a conjunction. They both go together. And then after you give to the Lord first, you need to pay yourself. That means don't, when I say pay yourself, that don't mean just go buy a new outfit every time you get paid, go buy a new pair of shoes. You need to be saving. Did you hear what I said? Saving. Listen, if you don't have $1,000 saved, you're in bad shape. Because listen, my brothers and sisters, the average emergency that comes up is less than $1,000. And if you don't have it, you know what you find yourself doing? get in the jam, you take your bill money to get out the jam. Now you find yourself in a hole again because you was just making it by, by just paying your bills on time, but because you haven't paid yourself. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Listen, we're going to be a church that ain't going to be broke. We can't help people that we ain't got money. Let me, let me stop here for a moment. You know what is the most awful thing, and we're going we gonna to go on and give to the Lord. The most difficult thing I've ever had to happen to me in my life is to encounter someone who had a legitimate need and I couldn't help him because I didn't have any money. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but it's crushing on the inside. Here's somebody in front of you saying they need something to eat and you ain't got two nickels together to go buy them a sandwich. And you and I got to discipline ourselves to pay our sales. Listen, if you're not planning or have a long-term planning strategy, you are selfish. Because the Bible says you and I that a, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And that's what you and I got to be thinking, not about us the next time you get paid. You got to be thinking about your grandkids. How are they going to be living? What are you doing to set them up? Their lives should be better than yours when, when the time comes for them to become an adult. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hey Amen. So we're going to ask if you're prepared to give, you want to take your device, your offering envelope, hold it high. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless our gifts this morning. Father in heaven, thank you now for all you've done for us. Thank you for your love and kindness and your tender mercy. Thank you for the privilege of being able to give to you this morning, which you've given to us. And Lord God, I ask you now in your son Jesus' name that you would give us the courage and the boldness to trust you, Lord God. You promise that as we give to you the tithe and offering, you promise to return to us a blessing. So much so that you have to open the windows of heaven to, to pour it out to us. And then as you pour it out to us, you promise that we wouldn't have room enough to receive it. So we thank you now for the blessing on the way, Lord God. I ask you now to have mercy on those who have a desire to give but don't have. Next time you place in their hands, Lord God, help us to be good stewards. And Lord God, I ask you that you would give us wisdom and knowledge and an understanding how to be a good steward with everything that you've entrusted to us. Thank you for your faithfulness in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I mean, you're now in the hands of our ushers and officers to give to the Lord. Lord, to our eyes, please stand in front of the direction of the ushers. All I want to do is, all I want to do is bless your name. Bless your name.
Give God some praise. Let him sing it unto the Lord, leading us this far in our worship experience. Amen. You know, I've learned something. <laughs> if you hang around older people long enough, you will learn some stuff. And let me say to you, they're a testimony to you or not. If you hang, keep on hanging in there. A few more risings and settings of the sun, you can make it if you hold on to the Lord's unchanging hand. Amen. I'm so excited this morning to thank God because I see Sister Davis in the choir this evening, this morning. I'm so glad to see her. For those of you who don't know, Sister Davis, you had a, was it a knee replaced? Did you have, you had what? It was a knee replaced, right? A total knee replacement, and she was at home on bed rest, and when she got the energy, she came right back to the Lord's house. Amen? Amen. And so I'm so glad to see her recovering well and doing well. I want to encourage and remind all of you, we're still going out into our neighborhood to reach every household in the 53212 zip code immediately after service. And so I want to ask those of you who would to please see uh, Minister, uh, Minister Smith, uh, along with uh, Deacon Taylor or one of their other representatives, they'll be out at the table, one of the tables in the main lobby, and they'll give to you the uh, blocks for you to be able to take. Listen, it doesn't take that much time. You ring their doorbell, knock on the door, they're not at home. It's a bag for you to hang on their door. But if they answer the door, we want to talk to them about Jesus. Amen? Amen? We're so grateful to God for his faithfulness towards us. And so I want to ask, if you would, to stand to your feet as we get ready to dive into God's word together this morning. I want to ask if you would turn to Jonah chapter, Jonah chapter 1, and we're actually going to start at verse 17. They got verse chapter 2 up there, and so this is why you want to have your Bible, amen? amen. Jonah chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 17. Jonah chapter 1, and listen, if, you have, if you're having trouble finding Jonah, there's nothing wrong with going to the table of contents. Amen? Because that's where all of us have had to start. And so the way this is going to work is that we believe in the public reading of Scripture. So I'm going to read verse 17. So this works out to be a blessing this morning. Amen? And then you all are going to read verse 2. And we're going to alternate until we get to the end of chapter 2. 
in which there are 10 verses. Okay, so verse 10, we'll read together. Oh, you guys can go ahead and put that scripture back up for us. I'm going to read verse 17. And so my Bible reads as such from, there we go, Jonah chapter 1 and verse 17. And it says, and the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. You read verse 2, chapter 2 and verse 1 together. Oh, whoa, 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 slow up. This is the living, breathing word of God. Let's read this together. Amen. On the count of three. One, two, three. There we go. And he said, I called out to the Lord. I, I cried out. My, I cried out of my distress. I cried out of my distress to the Lord and he answered me I cried for help from the depth of Sheol you heard my voice so I said I have been expelled from your sight, and nevertheless I will look again toward your holy temple. I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever, but you have brought me up, brought up my life from the pit, O oh Lord my God. Those who regard vain idols forsake their faithfulness. Let's read our sin together. Then the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah up onto the dry land. Hey Amen. Listen, for the time that you and I have together, I like to title this text in our exchange. Just simply, you are worth saving. You are worth saving. Would you do this for me? We don't do this this often. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God knows you are worth saving. Amen. Hey I want to ask if you would to bow your heads with us in a word of prayer. God of grace, God of glory, we do praise and magnify your name. We thank you for the strength and the power that is in your name. And so, Lord God, we come to you once again in the strong and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Pleading with you again, sir, to speak to us. Lord God, we ask you now to soften our hearts, unstop our ears, and remove the scales from our eyes, that we would hear what you have to say to us this morning. I ask you this morning, Lord God, that I need you, Lord God. I need you to think with my mind and speak with my mouth. And Lord God, I ask you that you would even unveil to me as I stand here the riches of your word for your people this morning encourage someone today uplift someone and most importantly save someone this morning we thank you for your faithfulness in your son jesus name amen when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul. My dear brothers and sisters, this sacred hymn that has lasted throughout the days and months and years of time came at a great expense. The author Horatio Spafford was a Presbyterian layman from Chicago. He was an established, very 
successful and had a very successful legal practice as a young businessman. And by the way, my dear brothers and sisters, he was a devout Christian. Among his close friends were several evangelists, including the great Dwight Lyman Moody, the founder of Moody Bible Institute. Spassford's fortune evaporated in the wake of the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, and having invested heavily in real estate along the Lake Michigan shoreline, he lost everything overnight. In a saga reminiscent of Job, his son died a short time before his financial disaster. But that isn't all, my dear brothers and sisters. The worst was still yet to come. Listen as the story is retold by Kenneth Osbeck. Desiring a rest for his wife and four daughters, as well as wishing to join and to assist the great evangelist D.L. Moody, and also his musician Ira Sankey in one of their campaigns in Great Britain. Spanford planned a European trip for his family in 1873. And so it is that in, the, in November of that year, due to an unexpected last minute business development, he remained in Chicago. But he sent his wife and four daughters on ahead as scheduled on the SS Villa de Harva. And he expected in a few days to follow right after them. But it is, my dear brothers and sisters, that on November 22nd, the ship was struck by the lock iron. An English vessel, and it sank in 12 minutes. Several days later, the survivors were finally landed at Cardiff Wells. And Mrs. Spanford, she cabled her husband or called him on the phone to simply let him know, saved alone. Spafford, my dear brothers and sisters, he rushed and immediately he left to join his wife. And it is said that while he was on the ship traveling to reconnect with his wife, somewhere along the lines of the space in the ocean where it was believed that the ship began to sink, he penned these words, when peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my law, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. My dear brothers and sisters, just like Mr. Horatio, God wants you and I to know that you were worth saving. Look here with me at verses 17 of Jonah chapter 1 and also chapter 2 and verse 1. We see here that God knows you're worth saving because when he puts you through the storm, eventually it will lead to repentance. Look here with me at Jonah chapter 1 and verse 17. And it says, and the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Then Jonah prayed. Mm, 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 mm. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the stomach of the fish. My dear brothers and sisters, God call, God's call to Nineveh didn't motiv motivate Jonah to prayer. Jonah got word that God had a great assignment for him. That he he spent more than enough time inside the sacred walls of God's church. And God says, my dear brothers and sisters, that he says to Jonah that your voice, your ministry is too valuable for it to be cooped up inside the sacred walls of God's church. And he says that there's some people outside, some people whose lives are messy and nasty and dirty, so people who don't know that what they're doing is wickedness in front of the eyes of a holy God. That he says, I don't need you to go and tell them Matthew to Revelation. I don't need you to quote to them every single line and verse. I need you to just simply go and awaken them that their wickedness has come up to God. 
when he got this assignment, my dear brothers and sisters, just like some of us that are in here right now, that we hear the great call from the pastor saying that the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church is going to, is going to evangelize all 13,671 homes in the 53212 zip code. And there's a bunch of us in here who've been cooped up in God's house for far too long that we start shivering in our boots to say, I ain't going. And God says to us through the life of Jonah, that when I call you, one of the first things that should happen is that you and I should find ourselves talking to God. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, Jonah lets, God lets us see here from the pages of Holy Scripture that when you and I don't desire to pray on our own, God will find a way to push you to pray. So here it is, my dear brothers and sisters. Brother Jonah chooses not to pray when God calls him. He decides that he thinks he's going to run far, far away from God. And last week I told you that when he decided to run far, far away from God, God got the, the, the bowling ball of wind of heaven and grabbed it and said, Brother Jonah, you think you're going to run far, far away? Let me hurl some wind onto the seas to chase you down. But it's the, the storm that don't push him to pray. While he's on the ship and he knows he's a guilty one who's running from a holy God, he listens to the cries and the anguish of experienced fishermen. Could you see this, my dear brothers and sisters? These were no novice who were on this ship who have, who have not seen a storm on the seas before, but these men who've lived their lives on the rocky seas, providing for their families, working hard to just provide a good living, and when they see a storm like they've never seen before, this guilty man who's running from God doesn't even stop to pray. How heartless it must be. How cold you are that you're the cause of the problem, but you won't stop to pray. My dear brothers and sisters, the scripture even tells us that when Jonah was thrown overboard, he began to sink. And as he's falling into the deep, deep blue sea, he still doesn't pray. But the Bible tells us in Jonah chapter 2 and verse 1 that when Jonah found himself swallowed alive inside this great fish, then he prays. <laughs> Can I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, that God has got more patience than you got time. God will let you fall overboard. He'll let other people around you awaken you that you're the cause of the storm because God believes that you're worth saving. And so it is, my dear brothers and sisters, we see the stubbornness of Jonah that even after the Lord awakens his conscience about the wickedness of this great city, he still denies the responsibility to pray. And so we see that even though he decides not to pray, that God wants you to know that you're worth saving because he will allow for you to discover his great love for you. Look here with me at Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. And we're going to read down to verse 6. It says here, and he said, after he was swallowed up in the fish, I called out in my distress to the Lord, and he answered me. I cried for help from the depth of Sheol, and you heard my voice. You had cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the current engulfed me. All your breakers and billows passed over me. So I said, I have been expelled from your sight. And nevertheless, I will look again toward your holy temple. 
Water encompassed me to the point of death. The great deep engulfed me. Weeds wrapped around my head. And I descended to the roots of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you brought me up, brought, but you have brought up my life from the pit, O oh Lord, my God. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not until Jonah gets inside the belly of this great fish that he discovers God's great love for him. It is when he it is, it is not when he runs from God. It's not when he gets onto the ship in the midst of a storm that the men who were on the ship became so terribly afraid that they thought the ship was going to break up. It was not even when he began to sink into the great sea that he was on. But when he got inside the fish, he realized God's great love for him. Could you see Brother Jonah inside the fish for three days and three nights? I find it ironic as I read this that the author of Jonah doesn't tell us what he prayed on day one. Or if he prayed on day one. Did he pray on day two or did he wait all the way to day three? But it simply says to you and I that while he was engulfed inside this fish, he began to pray. Can I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, that while you're here right now and you think that you're not worth saving, God wants you to know no matter how deep you get down, no matter how low people beat you up, no matter how hopeless you become, you can always pray to God. I don't know about you, but, but when, when God's giving you an assignment and you decide to be deliberately disobedient, prayer is the last thing that comes to your mind. How dare I open up my mouth to a holy God who called me to go out into the neighborhood and go talk to people about Jesus and I decide to go out to you after church. Could you see Brother Jonah, day one goes by inside the fish and he's inside of it with stinky, smelly, dead fish. It's a good possibility he was in darkness for all of the three days and three nights. Could you imagine if Brother Jonah was claustrophobic that while he was inside the fish and he started having panic attacks, and day one didn't bother him. Day two didn't bother him. But day three happened to roll around and he began to make up his mind and say, oh Lord, my God, if you would, with my bowed down head and humble heart, would you hear me this, this day? And Jonah discovers God's love for him, not only because he could pray to God, but hear me closely, but God answered him. Can I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, listen, it don't matter how much weed you may have smoked. It don't matter how much alcohol you may have consumed. You may have laid down last night with Harry, Mary, and everybody else, and God says, if you open up your mouth and talk to me, guess what? It might be silence all around, but God says, I never stop listening to you. No, not never. And Jonah says, I know that God still loves me. Because there was once upon a time that I cried out to him when I had nobody else to rely on, and God answered me. Oh, can I, can I speak to a few of you all that are here this morning? Mama turned her back on you and walked away. You stole, you stole enough stuff out of grandmama's house that she don't even let you come in the house no more. Your sisters and them turned their back on you. Did they stop giving you money? Because when they give it to you, you go blow it away or smoke it away or drink it away. And when you, someday when you happen to be on the curb with no money in your pocket, no, no, your Quest card don't even come on for two weeks. And you cried out to God for him to, to send bread down from heaven. And somehow God will let somebody come drive down the street. And you say, hey, brother, do you happen to have about 
about five dollars for me to be able to get something to eat. And they say, well, man, come on with me. Let's go on the pick and save. And God answered your request. And God says that, listen, my dear brothers and sisters, you're worth saving because he answered your prayer. But not only does Jonah discover that God still loves him because of him answering his prayer, but he discovers that God still loves him because he tried to, he thought he was going to escape God's jurisdiction. Can I speak to you for a moment? Have you, ever, have you ever disobeyed God to feel you're so far away from him that if you opened up your mouth, it wouldn't even reach heaven? Jonah spent all the money that he had to run from God. He got on a ship that he knew wasn't going to return for at least two years to run <laughs> to say that the people you're telling me to go reach, if they don't hear from me, guess what? They deserve the hell they're going to. Okay, let me speak to you this morning. You think your cousins and them are so bad and beneath you because they did some stuff that you didn't do? You think that, they, that, that she's so horrible because she got seven kids with six baby daddies and you've been married all your little life with one husband, this, that, and the third? God wants you to know that, guess what? Her sleeping around ain't no better than you getting high. It ain't better than the lie that you told. It ain't no better than you being racist and talking people down and tearing up their character. Because guess what? If you didn't hear about Jesus, guess what? You'll be on your way to the same burn of hell they're going to be on their way to. Can you... Can you imagine the, the gratitude that Jonah has when he really discovers God's love for him? I couldn't do nothing but weep when I discovered this as I was reading Holy Scripture. That the Bible says he cried from his distress and God answered him. Lord Jesus, I'm trying to move on. I really am. But listen here, my dear brothers and sisters, when you know you've broken the heart of God over and over and over again, and you know that the only person who answers prayer is God. Okay, let me come down your street for a moment. When you know that you've messed up over and over again, it's comforting to know that God doesn't give the privilege of answering prayer to other creations. That God doesn't delegate the responsibility of listening to your cry to anyone else. But it's a joy that rises up on the inside of your heart that all you can say is thank you, Lord, when you really realize that God answered me. All you can do is just tell God thank you that you just answered me. When you know you've walked away from him and you don't deserve him to listen to nothing you got to say, that God answered me. When you were broken and crushed and you lost that loved one, God heard you. When you're on the verge of losing your mind after losing a job, God heard you. When you got, okay, let me come to you. When you prayed that prayer in the bathroom with that pregnancy test, praying to Jesus, I don't even know who this Negro is, but God, please don't let me wind up pregnant. Guess what? God heard you. When you were sitting in a jail cell and you ain't had bail money and you didn't know how you was going to get up out that cell and guess what? You cried out to God and you said, if you get me up out of here, I promise I'm never going to do this again. Guess what? In that orange jumpsuit, God wants you to know he heard you. And so that God shows us and to Jonah, his great love for him and for us. But God shows you and I that you and I are worth saving because he will spare no expense to get your attention. 
God will spare. Listen to me closely. Because he knows you're worth saving, he will spare no expense to get your attention. Look here, my dear brothers at brothers and sisters at verse 2. It says that not only did Jonah cry out to the Lord from his distress, but Jonah thought he was going to die. Look here with me at, at, at verse 2. It says, and I cried for help from the depth of Sheol, and you heard my voice. This, my brothers and sisters, is a sign of a disobedient follower of Jesus. Because for you and I, based on Romans 10 and 9, it says to you and I that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. In so many words, that's your get out of hell free card. Okay, let me just say that to you in case you didn't get it. It's your get out of hell free card because you, you and I both deserve to go to hell. But brother Jonah gives us insight that many of us find ourselves in when we're disobedient against God and we feel like life, that life is being sucked out of us and we're about to die is because we don't understand that death is nothing but a doorway to our eternal destiny to spend heaven and spend it in heaven with God. But well, my dear brothers and sisters, listen, I don't know if you've ever been there before, but when you're on the brink of thinking your life is about to come to an end and you know you ain't right with Jesus, there's all kind of fear that gets bubbled up on the inside of your heart because you know that when my eyes close on this side for the final time, when I open them again, it's going to be someplace hot where the fire does not, is not quenched and the worm does not stop eating away. And Brother Jonah says, I was on the verge of dying, and you heard my voice. He says that I, I've learned that, God, you will spare no, attention, no, no expense at getting my attention because you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas. You started commanding the seas to start moving in rhythms they had never done before. You let the seas engulf me, and you let the breakers and the billows pass over me. And so it is that because this man who, who's had a relationship with God, is that you this morning that's here that's been disobedient to the Lord? You had a relationship with him intimately to know his voice? That Jonah says God had to let him experience being expelled from his sight. How heartless and cold it must feel as a child of God to experience the experience the atmosphere for just a flee, few fleeting moments without God's presence. How difficult that must be to walk with God and, and to feel God's presence and know his word and then to feel that God has left you all alone. God says that, that Jonah even got to the place that he felt that he would never again see God's holy temple. Is that you, my brothers and sisters, that God's had to pour everything that he could, his arsenal of creation out on you, that you seem to feel so far away that you never thought you would make it back into God's house again? And he says that he even allowed the waters to encompass him to the point of death. And the great deep engulfed him. And weeds were wrapped around his head. It is rather ironic that even the language that Jonah uses here, the Hebrews believe that the earth itself was created from the bottoms of the ocean. And here Jonah tells us that he sank so deep he went to the mountains that are at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> and, and it says after that, that the earth with its bars were around him forever. But he says, but you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord, my God. 
Verse 7 says something to us, to you and I, because some of us think that God really won't go that far. My dear brothers and sisters, if no one ever has told you this before, God will go as far as to end your life to get your attention. Okay, nobody want to tell you that. We think, we think Jesus is this fairy who will walk through a, through a forest and never break a branch. He would say, excuse me to ants if he happened to step on them. But God is a God of judgment. Okay, since you don't believe that, look here with me at verse 7. Jonah says, while I was fainting away. Jonah said that while his life was on the verge of being taken from him, it says that then he remembered the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, if you don't hear me now, you'll hear me when you're on your hospital bed. God will slow down your breath to the point that you know your life is on the verge of coming to an end because he will spare no expense because he knows that you're worth saving. Could you imagine Brother Jonah in this fish? (gasps) As his eyes begin to close. as the air that God had put inside the fish when he closed his mouth to sustain him began to dwindle away. And he... (sighs) That he remembered the Lord. And he remembered that prayer still reaches up to God's holy temple. That is he. He remembered in verse 8 that those who regard vain idols, they forsake their faithfulness and pledge their complete allegiance to the one and true God, and his name is Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we see here that since God will go as far as to end your life, That verse 9 says to you and I, he will do that and more to push you to repent. Look at verse 9, and I'm out your way. Verse 9 says that when he thought his life was fleeting away from him, when he simply opened up his mouth and said to the Lord, but I will. Let me say this to you, my dear brothers and sisters. You may love your son, your husband, your sisters, and your cousins, but guess what? This ain't no buddy program to get into heaven. This is an individual responsibility and and decision that must be made that you got to make a decision to say, guess what, God? For God I live, for God I die. I've committed myself to other people and things and careers, but this day, I'm walking with Jesus. And God says it don't matter how long you've been away from him, how bad you done messed up, the moment you make up your mind to cry out to him and say, for God I live and for God I die, the moment he said that and said, Lord, whatever you want to do with me. The Bible says that the fish vomited Jonah about the well. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, all God wants you to do is have a little talk with Jesus. He wants you to have a little talk with Jesus authentically from your heart. None of them jail box cell prayers, none of that other kind of stuff that you've done. Lord, if you get me out of this, I promise I ain't going to do this no more. God wants to see some action come behind your words. And if I could say this to you, my dear brothers and sisters, that the Bible says to us, Chapter 3 says, and then the Lord spoke to Jonah and said, go to Nineveh. (laughs) If you would, for just a few moments, just hear me out for a moment. That God knows exactly what it's going to take. That I could imagine in my sanctified imagination. That as Brother Jonah started going down into the deep of the sea. 
There was a fish some long, some years ago uh, uh, that God had already created. He had already been feeding in himself to be big enough to house Jonah. And the Bible simply tells us that, that the fish was able to swallow Jonah up. And I can imagine in my sanctified imagination that God had created a fish that was going to be big enough that when he opened his mouth, it was going to have enough oxygen in the inside of it to sustain Jonah for three days and three nights. And while he was in the fish for three days and three nights, God had the fish in the gym training it so that the fish could swim fast enough over the three days and three nights. That as God was working to push him to repent, that God was going to have the fish to get him there at just the right place. That the fish wouldn't get lost in the storms or the seas. He had a GPS on the inside of him. That he knew exactly where to go. That when Jonah made up his mind and said, God, I'll pay my vows and sacrifice everything to you. That God spit him out at just the right place. If you will, come closely here for just a moment. You might have think that God has given up on you, but guess what? God let you, he held on to you. He let you stay addicted to the drug long enough. He even let you come in here high this morning. That God says the moment you make up your mind to give your life to me, I'll spit you out. At 2412 North 6th Street in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53212. So that you would know that regardless of what you've done, there's a savior that on the hill far, far away, on an old rugged cross, that my savior and yours walked up an old rugged cross and let them put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. He did it for you. He let them spit upon him. He let them embarrass him for you. Listen here, my brother and sister, and I'm going to take my seat. It's not easy to come back to God when you know you messed up in front of other people. But he was shamed so, so you could take the walk and not have to feel ashamed anymore because he already paid the cost on the hill a long time ago. And all God wants you to know you are worth saving. Listen, hey, no, 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 no. Hear me out for a moment. I ain't talking about grandmama and them and all those other people. God said he thought you were worth saving. So I'll let you go through hell and high water. If it takes sickness, I'll let you get sick to slow you down so that you will repent and do what I told you to do. There's some people in here right now God's unspoken to your heart to work in the children's ministry. You walk past him at that table out there and say, oh, that's what somebody else to do. And God says, I told you to go down there and go help them. Some of us work in the business place and God told us to start a Bible study at our workplace. And we said, that ain't for me. That's for the pastor to do. And God says, I'll let your car fall apart. I'll let you get demoted. I'll let your money get short. And when your money gets short and you still don't decide to talk with me for me to be able to tell you what's wrong, I'll let this happen and that happen and I'll let people walk away because I need you to do what I told you to do. My dear brothers and sisters, before I extend the invitation this morning, I want you to know God ain't got no stuttering problem. What he said the first time, that's what he meant. And so this morning, before we extend the invitation, will you bow your heads where you're at this morning? Would you pray and ask God to forgive you? All of us are guilty. We've let fear get in the way. We've let responsibility get in the way. We've let people get in the way. And God says, I don't care about none of that. I don't want none of the other stuff. I want you. Because when you become my mouthpiece, then you got a story to tell about how I delivered you that can encourage somebody else. God, thank you. We want to extend an invitation that there may be someone here you have maybe never placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to allow for him to be Savior and to be Lord of your life. We want to give you that opportunity this morning. I want to ask if you would to stand to your feet. 
Amen. God, thank you. You ain't got to wait on me. God, thank you. Church, let's give God some praise for our sister that comes so far. Listen to me. Listen, 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 listen. You might be saying right now, today and today, this is my first time in this church. And God don't care about none of that. He said, however you got here, I orchestrated all of those events for you to be here to let today be the start of a new day. And would you come, my brother and my sister? Let me tell you something, my brother and sister. I know you might be thinking, I'm not walking this way in front of all of those people. I'll make a decision to walk with Jesus privately. But listen, Jesus says this to you and I. He says, if you be ashamed to own me before men, and none of these people in here ain't got a heaven nor a hell to put you in, he says, I'll be ashamed to own you before my Father in heaven. And God says to you and I, let today be the start of a new day for you. Would you come? Would you come? Church, would you help me out? Would you turn to your neighbor on your left and on your right and ask him say, is the preacher talking to you? If he is, I'll walk down the aisle with you. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? God, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Church, let's give God some praise as they come. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Would you come? We waiting on you. Would you come? Would you come? Listen, listen. Would you, would you hear me out for just a moment? Just hear me out for a moment. God says, I love you enough that I don't want to do this if I have to, but I will. Listen, my brother and sister, we're going to be on our way, but God knows that you are valuable. You know, here's the thing. Some of us think that, that, that the great evangelists who are on TV and that speak in stadiums, that they've always had squeaky clean lives. And God says, those aren't the kind of people that I call. I call the ones who got long records and their lives have been messed up, who got bad credit. And he says that, listen, even though you messed up and your reputation has been destroyed, God says, give me a chance and I'll turn that thing around for you. Because listen, I need some people that not only got bad credit, but I need some people who got education, who got jobs with degrees, because I need some of them to go into places where those folks can't go and be a voice for me. Would you bow your heads with me? Let's pray. You Father in heaven. I was worth saving. Father in heaven, thank you now for all you've done for us. So you I ask you now that whoever you're speaking to in this place, you that you would draw them to yourself right now. We're asking you right now, Lord God, for your spirit so to be you the wind behind their back. Me up and and draw them to yourself. You thought I was to die for. Thank you for your faithfulness. In your son Jesus' name, amen. You sacrifice your life. Thank you, Lord so Jesus. Thank so you, Lord Jesus.
of us are ready to go, but this is this is what this is what we do. This is what this is about. Would you would you do this for me? Cause this is where the rubber meets the road. Cause we start evangelizing in here, so when we go out there, it's natural to us. You understand what I'm saying? That's right, that's right. Would you do this? And I mean this with the utmost sincerity. I don't care if it's your husband, your wife, your child. Would you turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, say, listen, if you were to die today, where would you spend eternity? If they tell you they don't know, I want you to talk to them right now and share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Yes, ma'am. Would you do that? If you know you're going to heaven, you can have your seat. If you don't, I want you to talk to your neighbor right now. If you know you're on your way to, if you 100% sure, if you were to die tonight, you're going to heaven, you can take your seat. If you 100% sure. If you 100% sure. Now for those of you who took your seat, you see people around you standing up, then I need you to get up out your seat and go talk to those persons who are standing and that are not 100% sure. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Listen, we're grateful for those that have come. Church, can we give God some praise this morning for what the Lord has done? Listen, you not praising him like what God had to do to spare no expense to reach this one and that one and that one and that one and that one. We ought to give God some praise that he spared their lives. That he let them come up into his house one more time. If this was your brother, your sister, you would be running all over this place that God spared their life to come up in his house one more time. before we, we talk to these that are here. Listen, if you sitting in your if you sitting in your seat right now, and listen, I even want to say this. Y'all got that camera on me? Listen, listen to me for a moment. If you're watching right now via Facebook, and I don't care when you watch this, if you know to the moment you watch this, it's time to do something different. I want you to call 414-210-2568 and leave a message on a voicemail here. You can inbox us because we got people that keep tabs on the stuff we do on social media. And we will get back to you to walk you through walking with Jesus Christ. Hey man, listen, if you've never been baptized before, would you stand to your feet if you've never been baptized before? Hey man, my little sister. All right. <laughs> hey man. All right, so listen. All right, so all right. All right, sweet feet. Hey, let me ask you something, okay? Only you can do this. It's okay. It's okay. All right? Let me ask. It's okay. We'll come back. Just keep bringing her. We're going to be good. Okay? Listen, if you've been baptized before, would you stand to your feet? If you've been baptized before and you came down here to, to place your faith in the Lord, amen, and to become part of church. Amen. Churches, give God some praise for them. Listen, so let me ask you all this. Only you can answer this. Just like with Jonah, it's a personal decision. Do you believe Jesus Christ is God's son who died on the cross for your sins? Yes. Do you believe that he was buried in the third day, God the Father raised him from the dead? And are you willing to allow Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life? That means you'll allow, you're willing to live your life based on what the Bible has to say. Yes. Well, listen, we welcome you to the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church. Would you turn around and face your new church family? Church, let's give God some praise for our new additions. Amen. Listen, if I could, can we just do this? It's so many of them. I'm going to just ask a few of the ladies to come and let's mob them and let them know we're excited to have them here. Amen. What's up?
is we got a new brother who just joined our church too. He said he don't have a church home, Phil. This is a place for him to be. Let's give God some praise for him. Amen. We need some brothers to come. Let's come show our brother some love. The first is next week Sunday is our scholarship fund service. We are asking everyone to dress down, wear your college gear, wear your high school gear, wear your middle school, elementary school, t-shirts, jackets, if you're in a sorority, wear that. And if you don't have that, please feel free to wear purple or gold, either one. And my last announcement, is for all the women in the ministry on next week, Thursday. We are starting a prayer series that connects with uh, the book that some of us have been reading, which is called Fervent. This coming Thursday, I'm sorry, at 6.30, meet us in the Learning Center um, because we're walking through a prayer track that will help support us as women because if we are not praying, we are not communicating with God. So come next Thursday at 6.30 so that we all can be taught how to effectively and strategically pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, I know the musicians are praying. I know this is going to be different for some of us. Uh, but I believe this. Some of us are sitting here right now, and we still ain't talked to God. Listen, let me say this to you before you leave here. Get it right with God before you leave this space. Um, this evening uh, at 3, three o'clock, um, Lady C will be preaching at Mercy Memorial Church. At the address is 2474 North 37th Street at 3 p.m. Those of you who are able to and willing, it'll be good for you to be able to, to, to see your faces there. Grateful to those of you who went with us to Mount Horeb yesterday. I got kicked out because it was a ladies' uh, <laughs> prayer breakfast, and I was the only guy there, so I had to go. But I was able to be there just to show Minister Smith um, our support. Listen, we're going to get ready to go, but I want to do this. I'm going to say this to you this, this morning before we leave here. 
God says that my house shall be called a house of prayer. And I want to say to you before you leave here today, come down here and have a little talk with Jesus. And some of us in here right now, our, heart was, our hearts were convicted that we need to do something different. But you know what happens? We've had our heart pricked before that we need to do something different, but we never told nobody about it. And you know what's really sad about it is this, and I'm going to say this to you, and I'm going to give you 100% permission to do this. Some of us have told people about it, but they didn't love us enough to hold us accountable. And I'm going to say to you, if you need to pray and talk to God, come down to God's, to the altar. If you know there's something you're supposed to be doing for the Lord, and you're not doing it right now. And listen, this prayer time, I'm not standing here to pray for you. You, you talk to God yourself. This ain't got nothing to do with me. This guy everything to do with you and God but if you know God's convicted your heart you're supposed to be doing something for him and you know you need accountability to make it happen ask God before you get out of your seat who should I go talk to to help hold me accountable so that there's change tomorrow not today I mean not that the, the next week is going to be different than it is today listen let's pray and we're going to get going and I'm going to leave you to do that and we're going to be on our way you see those people get up and they walking this way. This is that time for you to say, you know what? I know I got to get some stuff straight with God. I'll holler at you after church is over with, after I walk out of here. Father in heaven, thank you now for what you've done for us this morning. We thank you for how you've added to your church, Lord God. And we're just going to keep believing you that you're going to keep adding to your church, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would shift us as a church, that we will be obedient and to listen to your voice of what you're calling us to do. And Lord God, I pray against the spirit of depression and low value in our lives because you knew we were worth saving. And that's why you've been throwing everything that you could at us to get our attention for us to see the value of who we are because you spared our lives for a specific purpose. We thank you for your faithfulness and your loving kindness. In your son Jesus' name, amen. And you're dismissed.